met a gypsy. You were star pre goat farm. Yeah, yeah. So what was that like? That transition. Yeah, but that's got a. That almost feels like the a really huge jump in that program. And if you were on it before and after, like you would have really seen like worlds of difference. Yeah. Um, negatives and positives of it for sure. For me, it was like, all right, when are we going? Like, I want out of here. California. Out of California. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was over the tracks and I just didn't want to be, you know, I didn't want to be stuck out here. Not saying that I'm a bad kid or something, but you know, you never know. Like, I don't know. You can just get caught up in the a lot of stuff. Pussy out of you. <laughs> <laughs> and just, you just distracted. Like thinking back now, I mean, me, Romano, Pierce, like we were all just amateurs. Pierce was about to go pro, but it's not like we were doing anything bad, but like, I mean, we would ride and then like, we would go play golf every day. We would go run around, just be idiots. Like we were not taking it super serious, you know, not as serious as I do now. And if I would have stayed out here and I would have never known any different. I mean, eventually I would have probably learned because my results would have sucked, but yeah, you would have been like, why am I so shit yeah. at this sport? <laughs> yeah. So for me, it was like, it was good to get, get to Florida and I wanted to be, well, the real, when, when I was moving to Florida, I thought maybe I still had a chance of going to Louisiana to do my own thing with star. Mm. Like so I, you thought like, all right, everyone's going to Florida. Maybe I'm going to head east, but I'm just going to go yeah. a little bit. Yeah. That way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know why I thought that it never happened, but uh, <laughs> it was never going to happen. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Like from day one, I thought, you know, we were going to make it work, but. Did you I bring it up to him? I should know better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. From the day I signed, it was like, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted Go to go back to Louisiana. Yeah. I was going to come out here, ride the bike for a little bit, get it set up, and then ship me a bike to Louisiana, go back with Rob and Kevin at the time. It was moved to Kevin's. And I remember I was out here for, I was living at Will Hahn's house and it was like every, every week. All right, Will, like, you know, when can I go to Louisiana? Uh, I don't think Bobby wants you to go, you know, a couple of weeks. All right, when am I going to Louisiana? And eventually I just was like, I realized I'm like, man, I ain't going to Louisiana. I'm not going, like I'm stuck. We're, we're doing this. So I accepted it and, and, uh, kind of put my head down and then we moved to Florida and it was pretty sick. The tracks were sweet. Um, and it's funny seeing how far it's come since I moved there. Like it, uh, it's pretty legit now out there at the farm, but, uh, yeah, it was different for sure. I think it was a big adjustment for, for me, not so much, but like, you know, Romano, um, Jarrett Fry was a good buddy of mine at the time he was on the team. Like it was just, there's nothing to do out there. Like it's just yeah. such a big adjustment and yeah. Yeah, definitely a different way of life. Luckily, I liked fishing and golf, so I was fine. Yeah. But if you liked the mall, if you liked... Chicks. Yeah. Like nah, actually, like there's a fucking lot of hot chicks in Tallahassee. They're well, just, FSU's there. They're just all... Yeah. yeah, they're just all at school. Yeah. Well, and then it's like, all right, there's your trap. Like... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can, I can still have fun, but I'm probably not doing the right thing. Yeah. You know, you're down at the yeah. FSU clubs and whatever. So... Yeah, it's definitely a big, big change, but I don't know. It was, it was fun. Like I, I enjoyed it and obviously I just knew I needed a change at, at the end there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, that, that argument of like, there was fuck nothing to do. Yeah. And it's, I think about, um, COVID for me. Right. So like I was in Australia, my wife was stuck in another country. We couldn't see each other. We are like two years apart, the whole deal. And it's like, that wow. was the best time of my life in some respects because I read like those yeah. two years, dude, I read like 80 books Yeah, and I was doing, I did so much jujitsu yeah. and I was like, I rode Just so locked in. I was fucking locked in bro. Yeah. And it was like the best feeling. Yeah. And I've been honestly chasing that feeling. Yeah. And as soon as COVID was up, as soon as I could get on a plane and leave to see her, I flew to Indonesia 10 days in quarantine three months in Bali we spent like a year in Oz basically and then moved to Dubai for a bit then we got the visa to come here and it like it is so productive to yes. just be a monk 
And I yeah. was literally yeah. a monk for two years. And it was like my business did the best. My on my per like I personally grew so much by just narrowing the focus and being yeah. locked in. And it goes back to that conversation that we had before where it's like, dude, if you can just take 10 years of your life yeah. and fucking lock in yeah. and say no to everything else, you can have a fishing channel for the rest exactly. of your life, you know? Yeah, it is. It, it's like give and take for sure, because to an extent, you know, you it's good until mentally you lose it. You know what I mean? And and that's where I got to the point. I just I mentally like was just over it. You know, I was like, I, I didn't really enjoy riding much as much anymore. And um, it just felt like the same thing over and over and over again. And um, yeah, I don't know. It was it was one of those things where when I was there, I was pretty. Locked pretty in. locked in yeah. yeah but it started to you know i started not liking my job as much it's not even a job i love love it so much i wouldn't even call it a job but yeah once uh after a, you know a year of that i was i was kind of like all right i need to at least change some things so then i would try to like you know go fish more and try to do some other stuff more but yeah then i was just like all right i need to i need to move yeah well i think um i tried to bait you like 20 times at press conferences this year to, to, to tell oh, us yeah. that, that you were over it but yeah. um kudos for staying staying on, on the down the line on that one but the, from my perspective it makes complete sense like yeah. i think that you there's a certain type of personality and like as much as i get flame for this like the the whole like the jiu-jitsu gym right mm -hmm. star star yamaha right now is like a jiu-jitsu gym you got like the fucking top dog that is the fastest there every day and like he's the man and then you got the dude running the gym and then you got all the egos that are you know you've got this group the mechanic and then the mechanic of this guy and, this, and i'm sure everyone's cool and everyone gets along but there is a cocktail that's going on at all times and it's like a moving, evolving dynamic. Mm -hmm. And then this is like, okay, same dudes, same. And then the only thing that changes is who did better on the weekend. Yeah. Right. And then you go there and it's just scrimmage, the whistle. <laughs> and then yeah. it goes again. All right. Scrimmage, 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 scrimmage. There's only so long, like there's some people that can do that, yeah. you know, and it's like, and it's the, the ego clashes that just like, whether it's on the track, whether it's like in the pits, whether it's in the lock, like did you, you just locked in dealing with these people. And like, I had an experience with a gym. I trained at this gym for five years, didn't know anything else. And it made me like, it was a hard environment to stay in and people would come and go. And there was like a core group of people that were there. It was fucking toxic. Yeah. You know, and it just took me like five years to be like, actually this isn't fun like yeah. i'm fucking good at jiu-jitsu now because of like dealing with these cunts but mm -hmm. like this really isn't very fun and then i moved gyms and i was like this is shit this is the shit yeah you know like i can work on what i want to work on i can do i can train with different people i can go to these different places it was just like no you yeah you train here you got this logo on your on your gi and rash it then you're locked in you're yeah. one of us and it just it I like I did it for five years there, and I was like, you know what, I'm fucking not for me. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty spot on to how it went for me, and I'm blessed to. I wouldn't, you know, I I wouldn't be where I'm at if I didn't do that, honestly. So I'm yeah. grateful I did. Like, it taught me a lot, and um, I mean, I would have never known that I I wanted to be. I mean, I always knew I wanted to be on my own, but like that made me truly appreciate what I'm doing now, if that makes sense. Like if I didn't know any better and I just, they immediately let me go to Louisiana and nothing changed. Yeah. Then I would have, I mean, who knows? Like I probably would have ended up, I don't know if I would have ended up better or worse, but like I got to live that kind of, kind of lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, um, but what, what really was weird for me is when I started to realize like I was racing every single day, like, yeah. And then when it when I started doing better was when I actually realized that because I would like I'd be the fastest guy during the week and then I'll, I'll never forget because I remember they were giving me shit for it but <laughs> before a one in twenty two no twenty three uh yeah twenty three before a one 
I was riding the practice, like I was ripping at the test track. And I was like, no, 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 this was 22. This was my rookie year. I was going East Coast and I knew Lawrence was going East Coast and Forkner and all them. And I was riding really well. I was riding with J-Mart. But I remember going up to Swanee and I'm like, uh, because it was before we knew what coast we were riding and and they're asking, you know, like, what do you think you want to do? And I was like, (laughs) I was like, I want to race jet. I want to (laughs) race jet in Austin because I was like, I can beat him. Like, (laughs) that's just how mentally I was just like, I can beat him. Hey, that's done. Yeah. I mean, it it was, you got to think like that, but yeah, yeah, I showed up to race. I sure as hell didn't beat him. I mean, I, I didn't even make it past the second round. I ate shit and knocked myself out, but it was one of those things. And then the next year, like, same thing ripping like i was like all right i'm going to a1 i i think i'm gonna win like i really do and i think i got sixth or something like that <laughs> <laughs> and i was just like this is giving me such false confidence like yeah i was like this does like it means something but at the same time it means nothing like Dude. i was i was going the fastest during the week and i'm like this means absolutely nothing yeah so fast forward like And you've got, but you've got pressure to go that fast. Yes. So fast forward, I started really realizing like, you know, the vets of the sport, the guys that were winning, which at the time, like Justin Cooper was around me. And if he was feeling on a day, he'd go lay down some burners and he'd smoke us. But then there was days where I would beat him, you know, or whoever, like, and I started to realize like he's out there and he's just managing his weeks so that he can go into the weekend fresh and he can do well. I didn't have that part in my brain that would allow me to do that i was like i want to win every single day yep but it was almost hurting me a little bit because i'd go into the weekend and i'd be kind of shot sometimes so now with kind of a different program it's like i you know i'm always it's pretty much me and ken it was all off season because chase and tom went over to alden so um but there were so many days where it was like this is no joke i would do motos and I wouldn't even have a stopwatch on me. I wouldn't even, the pit board would just say, breathe, you know, the normal stuff. Straighten you back in the loops. Yeah. I, (laughs) I strictly went off of like, oh, I felt super good that day. Yeah. Like, you know, I'd talk to my mechanic and, um, it just, it, it was nice for me. And then I went to the race and, and the way I think is like, when I work by myself like that, you can work on your weaknesses in a safe place. Yes. And, those days where I would get beat at the farm, I'd go to the race and I'm already beat mentally. I'm like, all right, well, I got beat all week by Jacob, so how am I going to beat him at I this race? I can't beat him today, yeah. yeah. Where now, I could really ride like shit, but I go to the race and I'm like, I'm still still damn good. You know what I mean? I wasn't <laughs> racing anybody this week. It was just me. So, yeah, like, yeah. I can go in with false confidence and sometimes, I mean, false confidence is Bank better than... Make it till you make baby. Yeah, exactly. So, now every time I ride, I'm like, I'm ripping. And I might not be ripping. Yeah. Who knows? But I go into the weekend like, all right, I'm the man. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.